Imagine if we could turn every building into a power plant, providing its own electricity, its own water for heating. And we feel in the solar industry that we can. We've got the technology to do this with solar photovoltaics and solar thermal. And what a prize that is, because in a country like Britain, more than half the greenhouse gas emissions come directly and indirectly from buildings. And more than half of those come from residential buildings. So, you know, uh, it's very frustrating working in this industry, feeling that we can do such an important thing for the world with such a wonderful technology and we're still in the margins, fast growing as the solar photovoltaic industry is the fastest growing energy industry in the world, we're still on the margins and we don't want to be, we want to be making this contribution. And it's about much more than energy and greenhouse gas emissions of course, because with the financial crisis we face the real challenge of getting lots of people back to work. And many of our leaders are talking about Green New Deals that we need to solve the financial crisis and actually get people back to work in large numbers. Well, energy efficiency is a very labor-intensive business. And if you hook it up with solar energy, you've got a pretty perfect uh, marriage to deal with climate change, to deal with the financial crisis. And it's about lots more besides, because there are other technologies that would come into play. The smart grid, for example, this family of technologies that is so exciting investors that can really maximize the amount of solar electricity that uh, people use and make the whole thing much more efficient uh, and sensible. It's an antiquated system, the old grid that we use at the moment. It has no intelligence. We can make it more like the internet. And then, of course, when you start doing stuff like that, you can bring in the financial equation. And now in countries like France, where people have feed-in tariffs, the lucky recipients of the feed-in tariffs with, with their solar roofs are talking about their roofs as though they were pensions. And they often use that word, my pension. Because, of course, when they've paid off the low interest loan, with the premium rate that is available from the feed-in tariff, they have a very nice income indeed. So what will happen as the world solarizes and as we get solar electricity that's cheaper and ultimately progressively more and more cheaper than conventional energy with its escalating prices and costs is that people are going to be able to think in this way about solar roofs as pensions and we will get a new class of investor coming in behind this. It'll be much more retail focused. People will be able to have a lot of ownership of this kind of thing and view their own homes not just as their castles but as an important part of their pension income stream down the track through the energy that's saved and the income that they get from things like uh, carbon credits and feed-in tariff income where it's available. Now, I've been talking about the developed world, and of course, this isn't just about the developed world. We've got to think about the developing world as well. Solar will be deployed in big farms, uh, so-called farms, big utility-scale power plants, both in the developed world and the developing world. And of course, you know, when people are off-grid, when they don't have the electricity grid, which is true of so much of the developing world, uh, solar's the right way to go because you can hook it up with batteries, you can provide power for communities to use to generate their own electricity, therefore their own local economic activity and lift themselves out of poverty at the household level, at the community level, and at the national level. It's not just about energy either, it's about water because solar can then be used to desalinate seawater, to provide fresh water from salt water, uh, and that's going to be vitally important because there's a water crisis in the world as well. And that's where you get the plug into food because once you've got water, you've got irrigation. And you can expect, we can expect to see in a world that's beginning to save itself using this very important tool, uh, people developing farms close to where they're developing solar energy uh, and all sorts of other economic activity um, built around that. So. Although it isn't a magic bullet, there are no magic bullets in the challenges facing human civilization. It's a very, very important tool. And I think as I look into the solar century, as I think the next century is going to have to be, um, I can see a lot of hope 
Uh, it's not a foregone conclusion. The jury is still out as to whether, you know, we true believers are going to be able to persuade others to sign on to this vision. But I tell you what, the alternative that is being espoused by companies like BP and Shell, EDF and E.ON, who are coming out of late actually against the idea of renewables uh, for all sorts of of reasons that they put up, but you know, there's a new honesty in the debate. The battle lines are forming. This vision that I've painted for you is is actively opposed by those to, who 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 seek to keep us um, stuck to the ruinous, ruinous and I would say ultimately potentially suicidal status quo. So, please join our side. Please share this vision, um, and let's save the world.